The wealthiest British people under 35 include Ed Sheeran, Adele, and Harry Styles. After finding success in the UK and US, the musicians collectively have an estimated worth of more than £150 million. However, according to the Sunday Times Rich List, they are not quite wealthy enough to reach the main rich list, where individuals must have a worth of £350 million or more. Even if their fortune has decreased, this also applies to UK Prime Minister Rishi Sunak and his wife Akshata Murthy. The combined assets of Mr. Sunak and his wife Ms. Murthy have decreased from the £730 million they had last year to £529 million, a decline of £200 million. With a fortune of £300 million, Ed Sheeran, 32, is the seventh wealthiest person under 35 thanks in part to the rapid success of his sixth album, Subtract. With £165 million, Adele, who is now 35, is in ninth position. Adele was born in London, has sold more than 100 million records, and earlier this year she revealed that she will be extending her opulent residency in Las Vegas. This is said to pay £500,000 for each concert. Currently on tour in the UK is Harry Styles, whose album, Harry's House, achieved the highest album sales in the UK last year. The 29-year-old's estimated net worth is $150 million. Gopi Hinduja and family, who own a significant conglomeration of enterprises throughout the globe and have a combined worth of £35 billion, up from £28.4 billion last year, are at the top of the main rich list. After spending two years lower on the list of Britain's wealthiest individuals, Sir Jim Ratcliffe has climbed back to the top 10. Sir Jim, who is currently valued at £29.6 billion, is arguably best known for his fight to acquire Manchester United, his childhood football team. He amassed wealth through the chemicals and raw materials company Ineos. The newly crowned King Charles III has the relatively low ranking of 263 on the rich list with a fortune of £600 million. However, he is wealthier than his late mother, Queen Elizabeth II, who was worth £320 million, according to last year's list. After a poor performance at the Country Music Awards ceremony, Nick Jonas went to therapy. Jonas stated that his performance with Kelsey Ballerini at the 2016 ACM Awards was his worst moment on stage during a recent interview on the Armchair Expert with Dax Shepard podcast. At the awards ceremony, he joined the country music singer to sing, Peter Pan, with her. Then there was another time during a really tragic guitar solo debacle that happened on live TV, Jonas said. In retrospect, I can kind of laugh about how big I thought it was. But it did travel more than I wish it would have, and it did cause me to go to therapy. When it came time for Jonas's guitar solo, he said that after hitting a wrong note, he went completely blank. Kelsey and I had a couple performances together, and this was one of them. I come out for my thing. I rehearsed it a million times. I'm feeling really confident about it. Not even really thinking about it like it's a thing that's going to be problematic, Jonas recalled. I started off, it was fine and as I walked towards her, I just went completely blank, and I hit a wrong note and blacked out basically and clocked that it was wrong, and I couldn't stop. Even though Nick has learned to not put too much pressure on himself when anything goes wrong during a live performance, he declared at the time that it was his worst moment. Kevin, the oldest Jonas brother, discussed his reactions to live performances during his podcast visit. I think that any time that live TV is happening, it's the only time that I get a little nervous, Kevin said, 
to which Nick and Joe Jonas agreed. Eva Longoria criticizes Hollywood for treating people unfairly. According to Eva Longoria, female directors of color don't have as many opportunities in Hollywood as white guys do. I felt the weight of my community. I felt the weight of every female director because we don't get a lot of bites at the apple, the Desperate Housewives, alum said at can of her feature directorial debut, Flamin' Hot, during the Caring Women in Motion talk. Lingoria, who has helmed episodes of Black-ish and Jane the Virgin, acknowledged that it had been 20 years since a major movie was directed by a Latina. We can't get a movie every 20 years, she said. So the problem is if this movie fails people go, oh, Latino stories don't work. Oh, female directors really don't cut it. She added, we don't get a lot of at-bats. A white male can direct a $200 million film, fail and get another one. Right? She said she felt like going into filming, flaming hot, we get one at-bat. We get one chance. I gotta make it right. I gotta do it well. I gotta work twice as hard. I gotta out-hustle everybody in the room. I gotta work twice as fast. I gotta do it twice as cheap. You really carry the generational traumas with you into the making of the film. The 48-year-old said those pressures fueled her. I was just like determined and excited for the journey and we have a beautiful film, she said. Based on a 2013 biography, the Disney Plus original series, Flamin' Hot, chronicles the inspiring story of Richard Montaez, a Frito-Lay janitor who helped disrupt the food industry. Latinos are still underrepresented in front of and behind the camera, according to Lingoria, who said that, we're still not tapping into the females in the Latino community. Lingoria added, so the myth that Hollywood is so progressive is a myth when you look at the data, saying there is an illusion of equity in the industry. I mean, yes, we had some wins but like no, we still have so much more to go. According to the actor, employment discrimination in Hollywood is more often the result of unconsciously hiring who they always hired, than deliberate injustice. Since she started her production business Unbelievable in 2005, Lingoria stated she hasn't seen much change in the depiction of Latinos in front of the camera. G-H-O-S-T-B-U-S-T-E-R-S, star Bill Murray, 72-Y-E-A-R-Old, is dating, Milkshake, singer Khalees, 43-Y-E-A-R-Old. According to rumors, Bill Murray is dating singer Khalees. A picture of Murray, 72, and Khalees, 43, has confirmed the relationship status of the two. Last weekend, Khalees had a performance at the Might Hoopla Festival in South London, and she posed for a picture with Murray that was posted on NTS Radio's official Twitter account. Behind the scenes, they were seated next to Connie Khan, an actor and DJ for Children of Zeus. The U.S. Sun said that Murray had been spotted attending Khalees' previous concerts in addition to this one. The publication said that after originally meeting in the United States, the Ghostbusters actor and the Milkshake singer have been getting close for a while and were spotted together at the same hotel. Mike Mora, Khalees' second husband, passed away in March 2022 at the age of 37 following a fight with cancer. Shepard, age 7, and her daughter Galilee, age 2, were their two children together. The rapper Nas and the singer of Bossy share a 13-year-old kid named Knight. From 1997 until 2008, Murray and his ex-wife Jennifer Butler were wed. Butler then filed for divorce, alleging that Murray had drug and sex problems. 
Caleb, 30, Jackson, 27, Cooper, 26, and Lincoln, 19, were the couple's four boys. With his first wife, Margaret Kelly, the Groundhog Day actor is also a father to sons Homer, 41, and Luke, 38. Al Pacino and Robert De Niro receive criticism from Chelsea Handler after welcoming new babies, horny old men. In response to the horny old men of the world, Chelsea Handler issued a call to action. Al Pacino, Robert De Niro, Alec Baldwin, and Elon Musk were criticized by the previous host of a late-night talk show for spreading their seed. There's a new epidemic sweeping the country, and no, it's not another virus, Handler said in an Instagram clip. It's worse, horny old men who won't stop spreading their seed. Handler added, don't even get me started on these four horny old men who have never met a broken condom they didn't like. Along with her scathing remarks, she posted a photo collage of Baldwin, Pacino, De Niro, and Musk. Pacino, 83-year-old, and Nor Alphala, 29-year-old, welcomed their first child into the world lately. In addition, Pacino has three children from prior unions, twins with ex-Beverly D'Angelo and a daughter with ex-Jan Tarrant. They cannot stop procreating, Handler said. Between the four of those guys, they have 32 children. She added, Robert De Niro just had his seventh child at the tender age of 79 year old. Kim Cattrall revealed at the premiere of, About My Father, that De Niro welcomed his seventh child with Tiffany Chin, 45-year-old. God bless him. His significant other, Tiffany, is such a beautiful woman. She came to the set once with her family and watched filming, and she was gorgeous and sweet. And I'm happy for both of them, Catrall told Extra. Handler also slammed Elon Musk and said that while he wasn't in his 80s, due to his personality, he may as well be. The Tesla honcho has 10 children. So how do we protect the women of the world from horny old men? Handler wondered. Don't worry, I have a plan to stop this madness, and I'm offering to put myself up for auction. For any available octogenarians, you can find me on eBay or DoorDash. And for 20% off, you can use the code, SUGART, S. Actually, maybe all these old men should put themselves up for auction, after all, they are antiques. She finished her PSA with, horny old men, they're never worth the money. At the Pride Parade, Dennis Rodman responds to criticism by saying, do your research, guys. Dennis Rodman, a member of the Basketball Hall of Fame, showed up at a Pride March in Houston and responded to the criticism he had gotten online. Rodman shared a photo of himself on Instagram waving to parade spectators while donning sunglasses, a smiley-faced cap, and a green skirt. Love will always win he wrote on Instagram. Happy Pride? Rodman, however, got several critical responses to the picture, and as they mounted, he uploaded a message on his Instagram stories to respond to the haters. Do your research guys, he wrote, hashtag Benayam. His comments were placed on top of a montage of images of Rodman during the height of his NBA career, dressed in wedding garb and other than controversial attire. In 2019, when several professional sportsmen began to come out as homosexual, Rodman spoke to Business Insider on the views of LGBTQ athletes in the sports world. At the time, Rodman predicted that the LGBTQ population made up between 10 and 20 percent of professional athletes. He also discussed the 1995 Sports Illustrated cover on which he appeared in drag. He said that the gay community showered him with admiration.
They didn't know the fact that when they shot that cover for the Sports Illustrated that that was the best-selling Sports Illustrated ever, Rodman said. And then the gay community started to reach out to me and said, wow, we never knew that our community can be represented like that in sports. And people didn't know at the time that I was doing that. I was, you know, doing all the drag clubs, I was dressing in drag. I was dressing in women's clothes. I was doing lingerie and stuff like that and people in the gay community started embracing me, he said. If you're gay, I didn't give a damn. Travis Scott won't be prosecuted for the fatal festival crowd crush. A Texas grand jury has determined that rapper Travis Scott will not be prosecuted in connection with a fatal crowd crush at one of his concerts. In 2021, Scott, 32-year-old, was playing at the Astroworld Music event in Houston, Texas, when a stampede claimed the lives of 10 people. Kent Schaefer, the rapper's attorney, announced that a grand jury had chosen not to prosecute the rapper with any crimes related to the incident. He never encouraged people to do anything that resulted in other people being hurt, Schaefer said, adding that the decision is a great relief. Police and federal agents have been looking into the safety precautions taken by Scott, event producer Live Nation, and others. Schaefer said he had sorrow for the families of those who died during the festival. But Travis is not responsible, he said. Bringing criminal charges against him will not ease their pain. The rapper, whose actual name is Jacques Berman Webster, is married to Kylie Jenner and has two children together. The Kardashians, Star and Scott officially renamed their son this week, 16 months after his birth. During a bikini runway display, Jesse James Decker cries and struts her thing. The weekend's Miami Swim Week saw the designer and singer exhibiting the newest swimsuit line from her clothesline, Kittenish. Decker ended the show after sending the other models down the runway while donning a wrap skirt and a tan crocheted bikini top. She began to cry as she walked and had to wipe them away while still grinning. Decker explained why it was such an emotional event for her in an Instagram post that included some of the pictures. As I walked out on the runway at the end I couldn't help but tear up she said. Sometimes we all are so go 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 at full speed that we don't stop to smell the roses and really think about how far we've all come in this journey. So I decided in that moment to just let myself feel every emotion and the tears came. She added, I felt a little silly in a swimsuit tearing up lol but the truth is the 14 year old little girl with big dreams took it all in. Never stop dreaming. In 2014, Decker launched Kittenish Online. In 2019, she established a physical location in Nashville. The designer also expressed her gratitude for the efforts of her staff and models. The mother of three frequently posts pictures of herself wearing her creations on Instagram alongside her husband, the former NFL star Eric Decker but she has received criticism for doing so. The former, Dancing with the Stars, contestant shared pictures of herself wearing a black bikini from her line in April. In the caption, the 35-year-old tried to get ahead of criticism by writing, cover up, you're a mom, adding emojis of a cat face with tears of joy and an upside-down smiley face. Miami's Paraiso Swim Week gets heated up by former Playboy model Joy Corrigan. 
The Sunshine State is getting hot under Joy Corrigan. The former Playboy model, who has almost a million Instagram followers, went down the catwalk for Beach Bunny swimwear on Thursday. The fashion show is a component of the yearly Paraiso Miami Swim Week, which is where swimwear designers present their most recent and forthcoming collections. The statuesque blonde wore a variety of bikinis as she displayed her sculpted body on the catwalk. The actress flaunted her beachy curls and sun-kissed features while donning a black halter bikini that she accessorized with jewelry and satin opera gloves. She changed into a glittering bubblegum pink two-piece and shimmering hot pink boots for a different appearance. The pinup also caught everyone's attention when she wore a coral bikini with beaded straps and diamond stilettos. The 2003 introduction of the swimsuit collection made Kate Upton the 2007 Sports Illustrated Swimsuit Cover Model. Additionally, Corrigan appeared in the Paraiso Miami Beach runway shows from the previous year. She has previously been featured in publications including Maxim France and GQ. Corrigan has also established herself in movies. She acted in the 2017 film, Aftermath with Arnold Schwarzenegger and the 2018 film, Reprisal, with Bruce Willis. Corrigan discussed her parents' reactions to her Playboy appearance in 2020. I brought a few magazines home, and as soon as my dad saw Playboy, he just walked right out of the room and didn't say a word, Corrigan recalled at the time. I said, Dad, don't worry, it's not nude. I did the non-nude issue even though it was quite revealing. But it didn't matter because I grew up in a quite religious environment where we went to church every Wednesday and Sunday. My dad wasn't happy about it. My mom yelled at him, baby, times have changed. It's different now. She was trying to make it sound okay. She was so proud of me, Corrigan chuckled. I think my dad was proud of me too, but he just didn't want to say so. Corrigan also shared her strict fitness regimen. I love to put MCT coconut oil in my coffee, Corrigan explained. I feel it gives me energy and curbs my appetite. I also feel like I can jog farther and harder. I also make sure my diet is 70% veggies and 30% anything else. I also work out every day. Jogging and yoga are my favorites. Scarlett Johansson, Olivia Wilde, and Sydney Sweeney embrace the intentional wardrobe malfunction trend. On the red carpet, bearing flesh has long been fashionable, but Hollywood celebrities are now deliberately bearing even more. Sydney Sweeney recently attracted attention when exiting Hotel Martinez at the Cannes Film Festival while donning a silky white Mew Mew slip dress. In addition, the 25-year-old, White Lotus, singer made her powder blue bra visible underneath her plain translucent dress, which ignited internet discussion over this summer's official fashion trend, the intentional wardrobe malfunction. Although Scarlett Johansson, Charlize Theron, and Olivia Wilde have taken note with their own open displays, fashion expert Melissa Rivers exclusively revealed that the trend has already made an impact on several occasions. During the celebrity-studded event, Sweeney strolled into the foyer of the well-known French hotel with her fiancé, Jonathan Davino. Her spaghetti strap slip dress featured exquisite cups that emphasized her stylish couture bra, and it hung loosely to the ground. The Euphoria actress's eye-catching moment went viral, but the presenter of the podcast, Melissa Rivers Group Chat, took inspiration from fashion archives. Dolce & Gabbana did it a hundred years ago, Rivers said.
They did these corset dresses, and it became a big part of the Dolce & Gabbana look for at least a decade. So, this is not some original fashion moment. Scarlett Johansson displayed her straps during the Asteroid City premiere in Cannes a few days after Sydney made her fashion statement. Johansson entered the Palais de Festival's red carpet in a baby pink custom-made Prada gown with a low back and a straight style. Her pastel dress had a structured hem, and a peekaboo white bralette gave the classic design a fresh look for the present. I don't know if it was the 90s or the 2000s, but I think it was the late 90s, Rivers said of D&G's classic designs. At the Fast X premiere in Rome last month, Charlize Theron took lingerie to a new level. Theron slid into a three-piece Dior ensemble that included a matching floor-length duster and black hot trousers. At a post-Oscars celebration in March, Olivia Wilde openly displayed her bra. The Don't Worry Darling director chose to leave her top at home and walked the red carpet at the Vanity Fair party in Hollywood while flashing a small black bra. Wilde slid into a one-sleeved white Gabriella Hearst dress that was hemmed below her bust to show a strappy leather top. Again, red carpet, high fashion, and look at the women who are wearing them," Rivers noted. I'm not sure it's made for civilians. WHO is Nor A-L-F-A-L-L-A-H. The 2-9-Y-E-A-R old girlfriend of actor Al Pacino. This week, Al Pacino and his partner Nor Alphala made news when a spokesman for The Godfather actor announced that Pacino, 83, is expecting his fourth child. The 29-year-old made her Instagram debut with Pacino in April while they browsed a friend's art gallery in New York. Alphala and Pacino have been linked since 2022. Alphala had connections to Mick Jagger and the wealthy Nicholas Bergruen before Pacino. According to Deadline, Alphala is a movie producer who agreed to a contract with Imagine Entertainment in 2021. Alphala was the vice president of Sony's Linda Opst Productions before the agreement, according to the source. She earned her undergraduate degree in cinematic arts from the USC School of the Arts and her graduate degree in film and television production from UCLA. She created Le Petit Mort, a short film that was nominated for awards at the Beverly Hills Film Festival and Holly Shorts Film Festival after earning her bachelor's and master's degrees, according to the source. In 2018, she created the television short, Rosa Nostra, according to her IMDb page. According to the website, she will also appear in the next, Billy Knight, movie, which stars Pacino. According to a source who spoke to TMZ on Thursday, Pacino was not made aware of Alphala's pregnancy until two months ago. Alphala is currently eight months along. According to the source, the venerable actor first denied fatherhood and asked for a paternity test. Alphala volunteered to take the test, and the results confirmed Pacino's paternity. Before she started dating Pacino, Alphala had connections to Mick Jagger. E! News reports that the pair divorced in 2018. At the time, Alphala was 22 and the Rolling Stones' leader was 74. She was also involved with billionaire Nicholas Bergeruen, now 61. Additionally, there were speculations that she had a romantic relationship with Clint Eastwood, who is now 93 years old. Alphala denied these claims to the Daily Mail when the two were pictured together in 2019. Alphala has two younger sisters, Remy and Sophia, as well as a younger brother, Nasser. Alphala and Remy have even collaborated on professional projects together in the past. 
The twins signed a production umbrella agreement with Imagine Entertainment, according to Deadline. Remy, according to the source, assisted Lauren Michaels personally on Saturday Night Live. Before her 51st birthday, Sofia Vergara shows off her cheeky side in a thong bikini. The 50-year-old, America's Got Talent, Judge shared a few pictures from her carefree day in the sun to welcome her millions of social media fans into her world, if only for a little while. Vergara was relaxing by the pool while sporting a sassy pair of black thong bikini bottoms. Lo mio es el verano. She captioned the snap, which translates in English to, My thing is summer. In another image shared on her Instagram stories, the modern family actress was draped in the vibrant sarong before relaxing on a chaise. In the pictures she posed for her followers, her gold necklace was the only accessory she wore as her caramel-colored hair fell across her shoulders. The 10th of July marks Vergara's 51st birthday. At the AGT season 17 finale, Vergara made fun of the fact that she occasionally feels insecure near Judge Heidi Klum. I mean, Heidi Klum, have you seen her? It's like, goddess, she's a supermodel, she said. Vergara has previously stated that she prefers not to stand close to the Project Runway presenter while she is wearing heels because Heidi is already 5 feet 9 inches tall. Where is she? Sophia asked. I try to do the red carpet when she's gone, even when I wear the highest high heels. With a lifetime career in comedy behind her, Vergara was crowned the highest paid actress in the world by Forbes in 2020, earning $43 million a year. She first met Joe Manganiello, the man who would become her husband, at the White House Correspondents' Dinner in 2014. They wed the following year. The love of his life, according to Tommy Lee's wife, was Heather Locklear, not Pam Anderson. Tommy Lee, the drummer for Motley Crue, has been married to several stunning women and has been involved in several turbulent and public relationships. His only two boys, who he has with his ex-wife Pamela Anderson, are regularly mentioned together, frequently as a result of their notorious sex video, which was released online in 1996. His second wife, actress Heather Locklear, actually held his heart, according to his third wife, Brittany Ferlin, despite all the hype of their connection with Anderson. Everyone glorifies his relationship with Pam, but he was married to Heather for eight years, she explained to People magazine, even calling her, the one that got away. She was the love of his life, she admits. I see it, because she's just a fun, sweet, caring, awesome person. Tommy even says he messed up in that relationship. He cheated on her, to this day, that's why they're still really good friends, she said of the former couple. I yell at my husband, I'm like, I can't believe you cheated on her. She's so cool, she explains of Locklear, with whom she has developed a relationship. That was a different time. He was 25 years old, 26 years old. Not to make excuses, but he's a very different man now from all those years ago. You live and you learn. Lee and Locklear were wed from 1986 to 1993, and they have been able to stay friends. Heather and I are very close. She's awesome, I love her, Ferlin adds of her own relationship with her husband's ex. I think she's the most kind, down-to-earth person. We met through Tommy, obviously, and became close. She's just very cool, very nice, just supportive and just a cool chick all around. Beginning in 1995, 
Lee's third marriage to Anderson ended in divorce in 1998. After Lee was imprisoned for spousal abuse and sentenced to six months in jail, their relationship fell apart. Dylan Jagger, 25, and Brandon Thomas, 27, are the couple's two sons. After Anderson's book, Love, Pamela, and documentary, Pamela, A Love Story, were recently published, the media once again focused significantly on their connection. Anderson stated of Lee in her book that, My relationship with Tommy may have been the only time I was ever truly in love. Despite previous friction with Anderson, Berlin told People in April that she and Anderson were all cool with one another. Elizabeth Hurley is the letting lady in the sexual thriller that her son, 21YEAR old, wrote and directed. Elizabeth Hurley is taking a break from posting pictures of herself in a bikini to work on a different provocative project. Hurley recently released a teaser for Strictly Confidential, a movie she made last year, and it is jam-packed with images of her wearing skimpy attire and having brief personal encounters with other women. Damien, her son of 21 years, wrote and directed the film. The story is about a woman named Mia who is haunted by the suicide of her best friend, Rebecca, according to the synopsis shared on the movie's website. Reluctantly, she accepts an invitation from Rebecca's family to their home in the Caribbean, where her college friends are assembling to commemorate Rebecca on the anniversary of her death, the site says. Once on the island, Mia is plagued by suspicions that there's more to Rebecca's death than meets the eye. Gradually, she learns that both Rebecca's family and each of the guests are harboring a deadly secret. As more deceptions come to light, Mia finds herself drawn into a world of sex, duplicity and betrayal. Lily, played by Hurley, makes many appearances throughout the trailer. She may be seen in both a photo floating in the ocean in a white bikini and another shot wearing a plunging red dress. As stated in the summary, Mia, the main character, finds herself drawn into a world of sex. And the trailer makes that quite clear. There are a few brief moments, including one where a hand lifts a bare leg and another where hands caress bare shoulders and a shadow of a lady is visible. These brief recordings don't reveal any faces, but Hurley is prominently displayed in one steamy moment where another woman seduces her. The same woman can be seen kissing her chest in a subsequent image. Hurley can be seen appearing to lean her head back in pleasure in yet another picture. In an Instagram post commemorating the occasion, Damien explicitly thanked his mother for her efforts in the movie, which had originally been completed in December 2022. Everyone involved deserves public declarations of adoration but right now I want to worship at Elizabeth Hurley one who, during the making of my first ever short film back in 2010, when I was eight, promised me she'd be in my first feature, he wrote. It's clear that the two get along, and while it may seem unusual to some to think of doing anything like this with a parent or kid, it doesn't seem that either of them was troubled by those more intense situations. There is currently no date scheduled for the film's release, it is still classified as, in post-production. Johnny Depp selects charities for the $1 million he received from Amber Heard in defamation settlement. Johnny Depp has decided to contribute the $1 million payment he is due from Amber Heard as a result of their widely reported defamation case to the charity of his choice. The Make A Film Foundation, The Painted Turtle, Red Feather, 
Marlon Brando's Tediaroa Society Organization, and the Amazonia Fund Alliance are the five charities Depp has decided to contribute the settlement money to as of Tuesday. Each of the five charities will get $200,000 from the Pirates of the Caribbean star. In June 2022, a Virginia jury determined that Heard and Depp were both guilty of slander. Heard agreed to pay Depp $1 million in damages as part of the deal the ex-couple reached in December. Depp promised to give the money from the Heard settlement to charity, according to a statement from his attorneys at the time. Depp received a $10 million compensation damage verdict and a $5 million punitive damage judgment from the Virginia jury in June 2022. Heard received a $2 million compensatory damages verdict but no punitive damages compensation. In the end, when the ex-couple reached a settlement deal in December, the damages that Heard owed to Depp were decreased to $1 million. Heard announced the settlement at the time in a statement on her verified Instagram page, claiming that she had made no admission and that the agreement was not an act of concession. I make this decision having lost faith in the American legal system, where my unprotected testimony served as entertainment and social media fodder, Heard said in her post. Depp's lawyers, Camille Vasquez and Benjamin Chu, told in a statement at the time, We are pleased to formally close the door on this painful chapter for Mr. Depp, who made clear throughout the process that his priority was about bringing the truth to light. Both actors have lately been spotted traveling over Europe to forget about the public trial. It goes against her people-pleasing nature that Rachel Bilson never fake an orgasm. With her broad ideas podcast listeners, Rachel Bilson opens up about her private sex life. On Monday's edition of her podcast, the 41-year-old Heart of Dixie actress admitted that despite her self-described people-pleasing instincts, she has never faked an orgasm. Am I in a hole? Bilson kicked off her podcast. I start to go into that people-pleasing thing. Like, am I just a DK because I never gave my partners that? She explained, it goes against my whole nature of being a people-pleaser and putting the dude first. When she revealed on a Broad Ideas podcast episode that she had not experienced an orgasm from penetrative sex until she was in her 30s, the OC star made headlines in March. On Monday's program, Bilson emphasized that it took her a very long time to experience an orgasm through penetrative intercourse. And then it finally happened, Bilson said, adding, and it was like, okay, the floodgates have opened. She continued, People put that kind of orgasm on a pedestal because it's so much harder to achieve. Mostly it was about me and my body and being comfortable and figuring out position. It's about learning your body. The actress has previously had no trouble speaking up about her extramarital affairs. The firing of Bilson from her work for disclosing her favorite sex position was made public in May. This is the first time it's ever happened to me in my professional life that I lost a job this week because of things that were said," Bilson claimed during a May episode of Broad Ideas. A job got taken away from me because I was speaking candidly and openly about sex in a humorous way on our friend's podcast. I cried, she confessed. I'm a single mom. I need these jobs. Everything counts. I provide a lot for my family, my daughter, and regardless of anything else, it all matters. The single mother and ex-Hayden Christensen share a kid, Briar Rose, age 8. 
These remarks follow her declaration in early May that, missionary, is her preferred sex position and that she enjoys being, manhandled, when having sex. Julie Bowen, a Colorado star of Sofia Vergara on Modern Family, talks about her divorce from Joe Manganiello. After Sofia Vergara and her husband, Joe Manganiello, announced their divorce, Vergara's co-star from the popular ABC series, Julie Bowen, wrote a remark on her vacation post. On the day of the divorce news, Vergara posted a photo of her final days of vacation on Instagram while donning a blue bikini with a leopard design. Bowen commented on Tuesday, This is what single and fire emoji looks like. After seven years of marriage, Vergara and Manganiello announced their divorce. We have made the difficult decision to divorce, the couple said in a joint statement shared with Page Six. As two people that love and care for one another very much, we politely ask for respect of our privacy at this time as we navigate this new phase of our lives. The two initially connected at the White House Correspondents' Dinner in 2014, and Vergara's Modern Family co-star Jesse Tyler Ferguson subsequently gave them an official introduction. Although Manganiello didn't appear in any of Vergara's recent vacation photos, he did wish her a happy birthday last week on Instagram. In a 2019 interview with Men's Health, the True Blood star said he really liked being with his wife and said, but when we're at home, we're opposites in all the best ways and we're compatible in all the best ways. He continued, my life is great because I really like my wife. I like talking to her. I like goofing around with her. We laugh all day long every day. My favorite thing in the world is making my wife laugh so much she cries. It's the best. 